Well, thank you so much for taking a moment to drop by as we move into the third message in our series in Common Ground on images of our faith. And today we are taking a look at valleys. You know, there's no greater place in all of Scripture to consider what the image and sort of the metaphor of a valley could look like spiritually for us than what we have in Ezekiel 37. So let me just take a moment to read to you a portion of this amazing vision that God gives to the prophet Ezekiel as he speaks to him about the people of Israel. And it says this, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. And then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And so I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And then we skip to verse 7, and it says this, And so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and a suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. And later on he prophesies the breath of the Lord, and the Lord's breath breathes into them. And you have this amazing image that's created by this prophecy that's given to Ezekiel, this vision that he has. So there's a portion of this amazing vision that Ezekiel had that tells us a little bit about what valleys are like. We all have valley experiences, those places in life where we go through a low point. It's a struggle and we don't seem to be able to be like ourselves. Everything's different. It's hard. It's not, there's very little flow to it. I mean, it is, it is a valley type experience. The valley is the place where we are tested. Often it's the place where we do battle. Remember David went down into the valley to face Goliath, and, and that's a pretty good picture. The giants that we have to face sometimes are when we face them in the valleys. The valleys are those seasons in life when things are just uncomfortable. There's an uneasiness. Valleys often are the places where we're isolated. We seem to be, in this scripture it talks about being cut off from one another. Sometimes in the valley experience, even our closest friends, it's just, it's just a weird time when nothing seems to be as connected and as, as life-giving as it normally is. It's a dry place. The valley is also the place where we sometimes are put under pressure to see how we will respond. There's no doubt that the valley is a place for us to be tested. Uh, I heard uh, someone say one time that the valley is the gem of the Holy Spirit. It's the place where we do something that's uncomfortable, we have to work through, just like the pain of lifting weights and running and putting ourselves through that, it doesn't feel good at the time, but when it's over, it produces fruit. And the valley is a place that produces fruit for us. So how do you navigate the valley? That's the question. What are some things I can say to you today that the next time you get to a valley, you can better navigate it? Number one is this, the valley is not a mistake. That's the first thing you gotta realize. The valley is not a mistake. It is a place that God takes us intentionally. Sometimes I see people that the most common response that they have to tests and trials, this valley experience, is that they think it's some mistake that they're there. They, they think it's because they did something wrong and they're being punished, and that's why they're in the valley. But when you listen to what Ezekiel said, they said that the hand of the Lord was on me, and God took him by his hand and set him in the midst of the valley. You, you can't be thinking that you're in the valley because you messed up. Sometimes you're in the valley because God is simply trying to accomplish something that He can do in the valley that He can't accomplish anywhere else. The valley, full of bones, full of decay, a lifeless place, bones, dry bones, lots of bones, and yet Ezekiel was exactly where the Lord wanted him to be for that season to test him and to teach him. Don't resent the valley. Don't think it's a mistake. Realize it's sometimes a place that God takes us to. And number two is this. There are some things you just can't know until you've been to the valley. I want you to notice it's interesting to read that, that passage. I didn't read the whole thing, but if you go back and you read the whole story in Ezekiel 37, you realize that in this vision that God gives him, that three times God says to Ezekiel, if you'll do this and this and this, then you will know that I am the Lord. Then a second time he says, you do this and this and this, and once that's done, then you will know that I am the Lord. And then the third time he says, and then you will know that I, the Lord, 
have spoken it. <laughs> you know, it's hard to tell young people sometimes, but there's no substitute for experience. You're not going to know certain things until you have certain experiences. Part of the, the value, part of the, the priceless value of going through Valley experiences is once we've gone through them, there are certain things that we know about God at a deeper level. We don't have to check our devotional book. We don't have to ask the pastor. We know them in our spirits. We know them about the Lord because we've been through the valley. And, you know, it, it is not easy to do that. You know, it's like, how do you know? Well, the way I know is, is I thought I was going to die. I thought I was cut off. I thought everything was lifeless and the bones were dry and nothing was going to work out. But then the Lord stepped in. And because I saw Him step into that situation, now I know something about God that I simply couldn't have known any other way. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. One of the things you learn about the valley is that even in a season in which everything else might be cut off from you, the Lord never forsakes you. He's always with you. And once you have that knowing in your knower, right? Like in your knower, deep inside, then it changes the way that you operate and your faith becomes a whole different thing. Thank you for being a part of this one this week. Hope you'll join me again next week as we look at the image of seasons in our fourth message next week uh, of images of our faith. Thank you so much. Be safe out there. Glad that you'll be a part of, here, of hearing this as we continue to explore how these different images impact our journey of faith. God bless you. See you again next Sunday.